side chaining with peak controller. Hi guys, this is John Judd. Today is going to be about peak controller and side chaining with peak controller. So on occasion, you have to side chain things. The benefit of side chaining with peak controller over the FL Studio limiter is that peak controller can target specific frequency areas of the thing you're side chaining to, and you don't have to attenuate the entire signal as the fruity limiter would. For example, I have a kick. and we have an orchestral bass. It happens to be an urban track, so you can abuse it a little bit. Typically with orchestral basses, you wouldn't want to destroy it with a side chain. If you were gentle, that would be the kind thing for those samples. Here's what the bass sounds like. I don't have anything side chain just yet. I have it set up, but it's not side chain. These haven't been balanced and mixed necessarily. I'm just sharing the concept. That said, here's what they sound like together. In the brief moment that the kick is hitting, I like the kick to be extremely present and not have both of those things fighting each other. With Peak Controller, we've linked it to this particular EQ band, and you get this. Now the effect is going to be super subtle. I would say this is a good example of using side chaining without destructive force. It's more gentle side chaining than it is full on balls to the wall. So in this instance, I'm not destroying the bass. I'm giving it a, just a gentle touch. No side chaining. Side chaining. It's a very subtle thing right here. I'm not totally smashing it. I mean, you totally could. And then if it's orchestral bass, you'd be destroying it. It happened to be an urban track, so you could go a little more violent with it. This volume knob is controlling how deep that is going to go. You can actually hear the side chaining there. I think I like that better than the original, even though it's hitting the bass a little hard. I think I like that a little bit more. So you're probably wondering, how do I set this up? What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to destroy this peak controller and just to bring a new one up. I'm going to get rid of that band. So the first thing you want to do is figure out where the most important frequencies of that kick are. Just give me an example. Let's say it was 80. You set this at 80. Now, just to be specific, so we're side chaining from the kick signal to the EQ band that is on the bass track. So here's what we do. Go to the kick track. We're going to pull up Fruity Peak Controller. Once you pull the peak controller into your mixer, once it's instantiated, it becomes an internal controller. You can link parameters to said internal controllers. Here we go. We're going to right click on this little notch over here for that EQ band. Right click it and hit link to controller. You're going to go find the internal controller menu. You might have a few here, but go find the appropriate one and go select peak. You're going to go to the mapping formula and hit inverted. Then you're going to hit accept. So the first thing that's going to happen when you start playing this and assuming all the knobs are where they normally are, Fruity Peak Controller is going to make the EQ notch go like a super boost. Uh, so we want to kill that. Take the bass and put it down to about 50. That centers it. Yes, they're linked, but no, there's no side chaining happening. The volume controls how deep the cut will be. Maybe about there. It could be a low extreme. It's about six decibels, which is a good amount. Now you notice it's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. It's basically an EQ cut. The decay. 
the more to the right it is, the faster the return of the EQ. If you're way to the right, it's happening very fast. If you're to the left, you wouldn't want that on something like this. You want it to be a quick punch and then get out. The tension all the way to the left, it's not going to be a very deep cut. All the way to the right, it'll be a deep cut. I like that one, maybe a little deeper. It's pretty subtle. Once again, the concept was we have the bass signal that is covering this entire spectrum, low, mid, high. Only the lows are being affected. So while the kick is punching, the bass is still present. Whereas if you did it with Fruity Limiter, the kick would punch and the entire bass signal would be attenuated. So I hope that helped you. Thanks for watching.